Brooklyn Independent Television. In the Zone is made possible with the generous underwriting support from the Brooklyn Cyclones. Tickets are on sale now. For information, 718-449-8497 or on the web at www.brooklyncyclones.com. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. This week on In the Zone, it's all about the Brooklyn Cyclones. Alexander Coppich will take us on the run of the Metro Dash obstacle course at the Aviator. And we'll also look back on the life and times of one of yourself, the voice of the Brooklyn Cyclones. All of that and more on In the Zone. For weekend warriors across the city, the Metro Dash was the place to be. Alexander Coppich has more from The Aviator. Uh -oh. Rope climbing, weight pulling, and tire rolling. No, this isn't the Iron Man Challenge. Brooklyn, this is Metro Dad. Whether it was to test their physical strength or compete for the title, more than 400 athletes ran, lifted, and climbed through 20 grueling obstacles. You know, I just feel like I want to challenge myself every day. You know, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. So this is a good opportunity to set a goal for yourself and to train for something. Um, just for physical fitness and just for fun. Just wanted to see, test out my, my strength and see how far I can go. Um, I love a challenge and I like anything really difficult and um, it was really fun. Metro Dash is a gut-wrenching, muscle-pounding obstacle course held in 10 major cities across the country. And Brooklyn is the only city in New York to host the event. This is actually my first time in Brooklyn, so it's just good to... Welcome. Thank you. It's just good to see the environment and just be motivated by other people. Although participants push their bodies to the brink, Metro Dash is a physical challenge they would definitely recommend. Absolutely, I would recommend it to anybody who's willing to test their fitness. Come out here, get strong, and uh, prove, prove yourself. I think it's fun and everyone who comes out, especially you see so many teams here or friends from the same gym doing it together, you can see how much fun they're having. Missed out on the tire roll, rope climb, and heavy lifting? Don't worry, Metro Dash plans to return to Brooklyn in 2013. The Brooklyn Cyclones love their fans, and the fans love the Brooklyn Cyclones. It's the type of love affair that's built for social media. This year we launched uh, the all new BrooklynCyclones.com. It's uh, you know all new graphics, very high res for, for everything. Uh, you know it's kind of a one stop shopping for for tickets to be able to listen to the game for, for feature stories. We're at the forefront of a lot of things in minor league baseball as far as you know our attendance and the, the records we've set. But we also have a huge fan base, so you know we kind of realize that our fans kind of deserve something new and uh, a new look. And with everything that kind of goes on at the ballpark, um, you know, the fireworks and the, the in-between-inning contest and the giveaways, you know, we felt like there's so much more to 
you know, Brooklyn and to the Cyclones and to a trip to MCU Park than we were showing on our website. So we wanted to do as much as possible to kind of give fans the experience of being at the ballpark um, when they're at home. You know, and a lot of our fans aren't, especially once the season starts, you know, they're family and friends that are of our players that aren't actually in New York. So we wanted everybody to kind of see the feel and uh, the excitement that goes on in the ballpark every day. So we wanted to add a lot of colors and a lot of kind of in-your-face graphics and things that kind of show just how beautiful the ballpark is and just how great our fan base is. And we also have a lot of new information this year that, you know, with, with the changing website that we kind of wanted to, to modernize. So we put some stuff on there like with the, the Cyclones and their appearances in pop culture, you know, with uh, like Kevin James used to wear Cyclones gear all the time on King of Queens. And then we also, you know, a lot of people wouldn't know that we sh we've shot a couple movies and television shows here. Uh, CSI New York filmed right outside the ballpark uh, at the Wall of Remembrance. Uh, the other guys with Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell, uh, they filmed here. The, uh, the scene where Derek Jeter got shot in the, uh, in the, in the dugout, that was you know, the, our home dugout here. Uh, last year, HBO shot um, a show here called Bored to Death that uh, had Zach Galifianakis and Ted Danson. Um, so the entire episode was basically filmed here. So there's a lot of things that fans might not necessarily know, but you know, year round, the ballpark's in use for various reasons, whether it's games or, you know, in, in this case, you know, TV shows or movies. What we're really excited about is our Cyclone Social uh, Rewards program that is uh, an offshoot of our website. It's kind of a re reward system for fans who use Facebook, Twitter, and Foursquare. It gives fans the opportunity to take our messages, um, our tweets, our Facebook postings, and take those and, and share them with their friends. And you know, I saw that, and we all understand the you know how strong and how important social networking is nowadays. Throughout the season, if you check in at the game and you're registered for the Cyclone Social Scoreboard, you're eligible to throw out a first pitch before that game when you show up. Uh, we also have kind of a countdown to opening day that we started from June 1st, where you can win tickets to opening day, uh, luxury suites, autographs, tickets to concerts and, and wrestling, a uh, chance to have lunch with some of your favorite players. Um, you can take batting practice on the field. So it's a lot of um, experiences that you know fans typically wouldn't be able to have, but through the social scoreboard they have an opportunity to. Um, and then the grand prize overall throughout the season, starting from uh, May through running through the end of September, you compile points for tweeting, for liking things on Facebook, for sharing things on Facebook, for checking in. There's you know a whole list of things for using certain hashtags, things like that. Um, whoever compiles the most points at the end of the season wins a trip or two to spring training next year in Florida. It's a very unique opportunity that fans have, and it's a very the kind of the uh, the guinea pigs for this this whole project. There's only th a handful of teams in the entire country that are using it. Most of them are, are college teams, but we're the first you know professional baseball team, professional sports team that's actually doing this. So it's a it's a great project so far. BrooklynCyclones.com is kind of your one-stop shop for for everything: tickets, merchandise, news, and uh, anything you could ever possibly want to know about the Cyclones. Is, uh, is on our new website. All right, we're here. We're going to demonstrate what it actually means to put your energy into the follow through. It's hard to believe and it's counterintuitive for you people at home to realize that you're supposed to be smooth behind the ball. You watch about 99% of all amateurs, that club is moving so fast behind the ball and it doesn't uh, make that desired shot that they're looking for. When you can get the energy, the speed in your swing to the finish, actually letting the ball go where you want is when it's actually going to do what you want. Let's take a look at what that, what that looks like. Not too bad. This has been Skills and Drills with your instructor, Hunter Watkins, at Marine Park Golf Club in Brooklyn, New York.
Well, the Brooklyn Cyclones are in their 12th season, and it's opening day. It's opening month for the Brooklyn Cyclones here at Municipal Stadium here in Coney Island. And joining me is Ed Shakespeare and Elio Vlad. So, Elio, your thoughts about this new season so far for the Brooklyn Cyclones? Well, it's another season for the Cyclones, and uh, this will be the youngest team that the Cyclones will be bringing up. Uh, a couple years ago, Sandy Alderson, general manager, and Paul DiBodesta and those guys uh, drafted some players from their philosophy, which was get younger, uh, especially in the middle position, center field, and get younger, get five tool guys, get guys who can, can move the system fast. So this year, they brought up Brandon Nemo, their first round pick from last year, uh, from Montana, eight, 19 years old, and he's gonna do a little bit of everything in center field. They're looking at this guy to be rising up the organization fast, and they bring up another bunch of guys who they draft this year, like first five of the 10 round, 10, uh, 10 round picks are going to be here. So what are your thoughts about last season? How did they do last year? I think Rich Donnelly, uh, manager, is coming back for this year. Did a really good job uh, molding this team. As always, you, know, you have uh, new guys, high school guys, college guys, a mix of guys coming in and out. And he did a really good job. He's very experienced. He's had 35 years plus in the ma minors in the major leagues. You know, he's, he's been with the Florida Marlins, world champion. So he's had a really good knowledge of the game. Tells the guys straight out what they got to do. Be focused, be on time, be prepared to play the game. And the Cyclones like that because they got to the playoffs last year. They lost to uh, Stan Island in three games. So he's going to come back. He's going to bring a whole world of experience. When you look at the Penn League overall, you have the Staten Island Yankees. You have the team in Albany. You have the team in Vermont. You know, Staten Island, you got to look at it especially. That's their, their, their cross-town rivals, their cross-border rivals. And they always do a good job of uh, bringing guys in, winning every year. Last year they won the championship. So this is, a year, this is a team that every year seems to put out a quality product. You have uh, other teams as well. Vermont did pretty well last year. You know, you got the you know teams in uh, Jersey, whatever. You told, they, you're going to see those uh, teams usually rise, but usually it could be Brooklyn, Staten Island will lead the pack. All right, now, on a somber note, hope, you know, we also have to close this interview, close it out on a somber note, and we got to talk about Warner for a second. Your thoughts about Warner? Well, Warner was... Uh with the Cyclones from the very first game they played up in Jamestown, New York in 2001. And uh, the Cyclones were so, and their fans were so lucky to get a top major league caliber announcer for the team all these years. And uh, sometimes they couldn't pick up the signal, but then now with the internet, they can, and uh, they could pick them up and, and so forth. So uh, I think, uh, he was such a hard worker and a perfectionist, at the same time a wonderful person in, with that perfectionism. And uh, he loved doing the Cyclones games. He's a very detailed announcer too, right, Elio? He really also had all types of names for you. Absolutely. I mean, Ed Shakespeare, he called them the bard on the radio. I was called the non-wretched because I did nothing wrong in his eyes. And so, uh, <laughs> so we were both trying to at least make his uh, experience doing the radio a better chance. You know, don't let people interrupt and everything. But he was such a hardworking guy, a very nice man. I mean, very knowledgeable about the game. You know, you can see him to here at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning do, updating his stats, doing it by hand, no computers at all. He's a very detailed worker, too. Oh, yeah. he. We would People would say, oh, why do you have to do all that by hand? But yet, when we got in a tough spot, Warner had all the information. He knew how many home runs were hit to right fields, even. He had the... Uh, I wrote a, a book about the Cyclones the first year, and Warner... I couldn't have done it without Warner. Warner had every pitch recorded and notes in red, and he let me use that detailed scorebook, which is the most detailed I've ever seen, and all tapes and everything. And, um, you know, he was very generous that way. But everybody would say, oh, why are you doing all that record keeping? But then everyone would say, Warner, what about this? And he'd have all the stuff. Plus, everything he had in his head. He's like walking basically in encyclopedia. Yeah. Absolutely. You can just ask him about anything and everything. Um, you know, when you ask him about what did the cycles do last week with the bases loaded and nobody out, he would tell you that. And, you know, he would be so forthcoming with that. And, and we're going to really miss, you know, Warner and his knowledge and what he's brought to the game. He worked for This Week in Baseball. He did St. John's Baseball just the, the last few months before uh, we passed away. So we're going to miss him. Well, you know, speaking of Warner, I had the privilege and honor to interview him last year. And I spoke to him about his career and the Brooklyn Cyclones. Let's take a look. Well, I'm kind of like Rich Donnelly in that, uh, you know, I started out in the minor leagues and I was with him in what is, it's kind of like what the South Atlantic League is now where Brooklyn uh, or the Mets have a team in Savannah and uh, Rich Donnelly managed in Greenville, South Carolina and I was in Spartanburg, South Carolina, a Phillies team and we got to know each other there and then I went on to do 
TV stuff in New York. And Rich Donnelly got to the major leagues and was with five teams in the major leagues. But we love baseball, and this is my favorite thing to do. The TV was great, and the notoriety was great, and I got to do a lot of things that were a lot of fun. But I really do miss this, the day-to-day -day grind, and being with the team is great. Now, it's not always great when you're in the middle of the night on the way to Mahoning Valley, which is 500 miles away. But, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. I think it's good. And, uh, and to see Rich Donnelly this year and Frank Viola here this year and to meet new people, uh, you know, I like it. I look forward to it. I have to do a lot of work, and I do it all by hand, too. I'm, I'm a dinosaur with the computers and all. I don't know how to do that stuff. If I need something off the computer or Internet, I'll get one of the interns or somebody to help me get that stuff. But I do all my statistics and all my paperwork and all my research by hand, and you do it every day. And I just say, when the season starts, don't try to do anything else. Don't plan on going to a movie once a month or go to, out to eat or something like that. You can't. You just got to work nonstop all the time to be ready each day because, you know, the major leagues might have 25 off days and we get about three. So you, it goes fast and it's great, but uh, you, you just got to bear down and then when it's over, then you can go to a movie or you can eat a meal or do whatever. Last year was a great year and I think if Brooklyn had won that last playoff series against Tri-City, which it did not, that would be considered to be the greatest team ever here. But since that team lost, I think maybe you have to go back to the first year because people forget all the great things that happened. But last year's team was great and it was the best hitting team ever here. And I hope there's something here this year too. But last year was tremendous. Overall, it seems every year it's a pitcher's league. You have these good college pitchers and uh, you know, it's tough to hit in this league. Last year, Brooklyn hit 284 or something and hit 300 most of the year. That was very unusual because you can have a good team and hit 240. So last year, there were some great hitters. But usually, it's a pitcher's league. That could change this year. And uh, I expect it to be another league. Hey, right there. Right there. I think it's very competitive. You know, there are 14 teams, so it's hard to keep up with everybody. I mean, I found out, you know, years after you see somebody, uh, for example, the first year Brooklyn was in the league, uh, Batavia, you didn't play Batavia until like the last week of the season. And, uh, and I found out later, I didn't even notice at the time, that their first baseman, uh, who struck out eight out of nine times against Brooklyn and made three errors in one game, that he was a star in the big leagues playing for the Phillies, Ryan Howard. Now, he had five home runs in this league. He had 50-some in the major leagues. Jose Bautista played for Williamsport the first year. He's leading the major leagues in home runs right now. He had like five at Williamsport. He had 53 last year. And uh, you never know. So you got to keep your eyes open. And when you some of these teams, you only play three times. You know, you play Staten Island 14. So you get to know those guys. And Aberdeen and Hudson Valley, you play 10. But the other teams, you play so few times, it's kind of hard. And, you know, there's a change of uh, players from time to time. So they might have a great player, and you might never see him. But I think overall, the talent's really good, and the pitching is great. It's exceeded expectations for me. I've been in a lot of leagues, and I think this is a real good league, solid league. As usual, for every opening day show, we always do the sights and sounds of opening day. Check it out. What does opening day mean to you also? This is great. It means baseball season's back from Brooklyn. I love it. 11 years, 12 years, I can't wait. I can't wait to see the season starts. Opening day, what does it mean to you today? I know. Oh, you, you know, everybody's excited. It's, uh -huh. like, uh, it's like Little League again. And you can be a little eager for one night, then it's time to go to work. This your first season? Second. Second. So yeah. what are your thoughts about this season? Should be fun, man. Should be a good season. We're excited. A lot of, lot of fans. Open up with the Stan Island Yankees, so it should be fun. Thoughts about opening day? Is this an annual ritual that you look forward to this year? Yeah, definitely. Opening day is always something to look forward to. And as far as one of you sell also, your thoughts about him? What's that? One of you sell. He's a great man. Nothing but good things to say about that guy. A lot of respect for him. All my prayers go out to his family and the Cyclones and everything. So uh, it was a sad day for uh, a lot of people. Well, it's going to be a good year. 
it's a good year to, to be out to watch games. You know, it's a good place to go, and the kids are always enthusiastic. It's the best, best ticket deal around. Uh, I'm just looking forward to a good season. Uh, hopefully, I'm a pitcher, so just anything I can do to contribute to the team would be fantastic. What school are you from? I'm from Sanford in Birmingham, Alabama. So this must be a complete difference. It is. It's my first time in Brooklyn, and I've, I've enjoyed it, to say the least. Is it everything you heard so far? Uh, yeah, busy and everything, crowded, but it's, I've enjoyed it a lot. It's really it's fun. Opening day festivities. I uh, just come out here and I went to Nathan's, had a hot dog, and they came out here and do a little tossing and just, just take it all in in full. I think they're going to win this year, this ring right here. They should win this by the time it's, the season's over. Let's Thank go you. Cyclones! It starts off on a glum note with Warner passing, which is why I'm wearing the heart jersey because he passed away of a heart attack. But hopefully in September, after Labor Day, it finishes with the trophy. Wes Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the starting lineup for your Brooklyn Cyclone. Leading off the second baseman, number 20, Juan Gamboa. And in second, in center field, number 8, Brandon Nemo. And in third, the shortstop, number 28, Philip Edmond. In the cleanup spot, the designated hitter, number 30, Alex Sanchez. And in fifth in the left field, number 46, Stefan Sable. We now ask for everyone to please rise and remove your caps as we offer a moment of silence in remembrance of this terrific broadcaster, a great friend, and an amazing person, the late, great, Mr. Warner Fusell.
Well, that's a wrap up for In The Zone from MCU Stadium. I'm Michael Bellamy. And don't forget to go out and check out the Brooklyn Cyclones. Take care and have a safe week. Bye-bye. In the Zone has been made possible with the generous underwriting support from the Brooklyn Cyclones. Tickets are on sale now. For information, 718-449-8497 or on the web at www.brooklyncyclones.com. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash bit.